far away from them all. They send a wire from the ship. Out in the dark sea in the middle of the night. I won't be going, Nora. Michael, you'll get better with bright and warm. I swear to you. You can't be kept in anywhere, can you? Jesus, I'll knock it out of you once and for all. Get your hands off me. You're not me, Dad. Nora, you're shaming us in front of the man. Stop it, Uncle Tommy! It's the convent for you, girl. Tommy, no. You'll find Don't it so easy to get out of that place! Get up! Oh, you're not me, get Dad! Get out of here! further away. It's true then what Stanley says. They're thinking of leaving Ireland. Stanley even knows what I'm thinking now, does he? Take me away, if you go, will you? You're going nowhere. You had everything, Jim. Any other brother would help his family. I have to go now, Eva. I'll call up to the house later. <laughs> I'd say you're not from here. Are you up for a visit? I could show you around Dublin. Sorry, Philip. I have to work. You're from Galway. Where would you say I'm from? I don't know. Sweden. Sweden? Yeah, you're like a Swedish sailor with your blue eyes. They're very short-sighted. Swedish sailors are? No, my eyes. <laughs> oh, I'd say they see all they want to see. So I can't show you the city? Well, I'm well able to show myself the city. Tonight, I could meet you. I'm busy, sure. I work in Finns. Tomorrow. Working then, too. Right. Wednesday, I can do a swap. Yes, all right. About half eight. Yeah, where? Well, I'll collect you. No, don't do that. The corner of Merrin Square, so. Do you know it? The canal. There's a seat near the bridge. Good. Grand. I'll see you there. Oh, and uh, my name's James Joyce. Hey, James Joyce. What? I don't you want to know my name. Oh, God. Sorry. Nora Barnacle. Nora. Good. Like Ibsen. What? What's Ibsen? I'll see you Wednesday, Nora. Where do you think you're going? Oh, it's all right. I swap with Ellen. Did you now? Well, you can go back to work and tell Ellen to take her evening off. Why? You seem to think that you can come and go as you please, Miss Barnacle. Now go and do your work. But I don't see why I can't do Ellen's shift. Sometimes, you know, I find that this sort of work just doesn't suit certain kinds of girls. All I want, all I want, says he, is time and space to write about the people who betrayed me and who sent me into exile in my own land. Will you pay me and go? I have to lock up. Your turn, I think, Cosgrave. Come on. It's always me that's caught. Come on, Cosgrave. We have boring to do. I'm much too nice for this lot, aren't I? Yeah, sure you are. Now, let me see. Hold out that nice little hand of yours, please. Stop messing, will you? Joyce! Just in time. Are you looking for us? I don't need to look for you, Gogarty. I can smell you out. We're going round to Mrs. Max. You coming? No money. Ah, come on. Sure, I'll stand you. Well, in that case, you're a true son of Aaron. And it would be treacherous of me to let you down.
Hope he's not too annoyed. <laughs> I waited for hours, but I could not see you. Perhaps I'm too short-sighted. It's probably foolish of me to write to you now, but I hope you remember me. Thank you, Mr. Joyce. Frightened of them, are you? No. Miss Barnacle, this is Mr. Cosgrave, Mr. Gogarty, and my younger brother, Stanny. We've met. Enjoy your night off, Miss Barnacle. Having an early night yourselves, gentlemen. Well, I'll say one thing for the bard, anyhow. He's not a snob, is he? You think I don't respect you after what happened tonight? But, Nora, believe me, it, it, it was sacred for me. You don't understand me, but you will. It's because we've only just met. What does it mean when people put their mouths together like that? Is it all right for you to touch me and I can't touch you? Because I'm better at it than you are. I love you, too. You say that, but I need more than your embraces, Nora. I want to know who you are. Will you write to me? I want to know your secret thoughts. 
I have no secret thoughts. Hmm. My dearest, the terrible sadness which overwhelms me each time we say farewell can only be driven away if I keep your face, my love, clear in my mind's eye. So it seems to me that you are always with me as I move here and there during the day. Surely none could surmise as I walk in the street or work among those for whom I care so little that it is your memory locked in my heart and your voice that I hear calling my name over and over. Sometimes I awake with eyes clouded with tears. Realizing, alas, that you are not with me, I must end here since this letter but reminds, but reminds me how distant you are and how sad I will be until we meet again. Your loving Karen, Nora. She misses you, loves you. What's wrong with that? But what do you think of it? The style. The style? For God's sake, Joyce. She copied it out of a book. What makes you say that? Because I know the girl we're dealing with. Jeez, you're an awful bollocks, Cosgrave. Do you know that? Shamed. The nations saw our heads bent low, nor knew that in our hearts untamed fire still unquenchable could glow. With Mr. Joyce, you're on next. Ah, Russell, I can ask you why I haven't been paid for the stories I sent you? Actually, um, some of them were quite good, I thought, but uh, frankly, there have been some complaints. Not suitable material for the Irish homestead. We won't be publishing anymore. But it was you who approached me. Uh, please, Mr. Joyce, this is inappropriate. Come on now, before things get any worse. You did well too, I saw. What? Are you fixed up with Cosgrave now, are you? What? Or maybe you've been seeing him already in the nights when you're not with me. Jim, for Jesus' sake. I could see you from here. I was watching the way you were with him. But you asked Cosgrave to escort me here. You said it wouldn't be right for me to be all alone. Ah, uh, you see, I forgot how quickly you get to know a strange man. Of Co course I talk to strangers. I work in a hotel. Jim, what was I supposed to do when you came up to me? Go, oh no. You might be a stranger. You want me to talk to no one but yourself. You have your friends, you can go off with them. Some of my friends tell me you copied that letter out of a book. That there's nothing sincere in it at all. You shot them. You shot them. A letter. Hear that, huh? They love me. Can't get enough of me. I laid myself bare. Because I thought you understood, and I thought that you also... And now I can see you haven't a clue who I am. And you think you can insult me for some petty words stolen from a woman's penny novel. No, I don't know what you were saying. I wrote what I feel. I love you. I can't help it if I can't say it different to other people. Even writers 
have to use the same words as other people. What happened between us was at least something like love. It never occurred to me that you despised me. I don't despise you. But for you, it was Jane. just another fellow like any other. And if it made me happy for you to pull me off, then fair enough. But I wasn't to get close to you, no. That was right out. And that's it all over, isn't it? That's this country. There's nothing natural about it. Nothing free and open. People paralyzed by fear. Frightened of themselves, frightened of the church. That's why you won't let me inside you. I can see that now. But I thought that night, that night where you took hold of me and you laughed, I thought, Jesus, we can be natural together. We needn't grow old and die without having touched each other to the heart. Jim, stop all this. This isn't you. Oh, really? And what do you see when you see me? I see you. Who? A nice, intelligent, bookish young man with a pleasant voice. Someone you can marry and have happy Sunday evenings around the piano with your family and friends. Do you know what I do, Nora? On the nights when I'm not with you, I go to whores to cleanse myself of the squalor and pretend that passes for normal life in this country. No. Yes, this thing you think so holy and precious. Any night I had the money I paid to fuck in a grimy bed, stiff with the slime of those that had gone before me. I don't believe you. Well, why don't you? Why don't you believe me? Because when I met you, you knew nothing about women. Whereas you clearly knew everything about men. Hey, Joyce. Need any help there? It's nearly closing time, you know. Hold on! Don't you see? It's only fair you know what I'm like and what I'm gonna be like. Are you coming or not? Do you want me to walk you back? All right.
so frightened. She they wouldn't touch you. I'm not frightened. Yes, you are. Poor simple minded Jim. I hate things with horns. Now you have horns. My mother, after she died, she appeared to me like that. There's so many people out to get us. If I stay here, they'll kill me. Jim. Be with you when you go. There's nothing for me in Dublin without you, Jim. You're mad to go with him. Do you know that? I know. I'm mad to go with him. <laughs> and what do you do when he dumps you in some awful foreign place where you can't talk the language and you have no money and it's freezing cold? Can I borrow your coat? <laughs> it's Danny. It's Danny. Now. We can get it all. Just so long as it's enough to get us out of here. Yates, he gave a few shillings. Skeffington gave nothing. He said you didn't pay him back the last time. Bastards. I got the boots off. Jesus. I think it would take so long to get anywhere, would you? He'd think we should be there by now. <laughs> I would give anything to be in Finns when they find out I'm gone. Nora, you don't really know what you've done, do you? You're not taking this seriously at all. But this is my second time running away, like. And I'm not on my own this time. Indeed. And a penny till I get an advance from the bullets. Look. Just let me find the school. Get us a room and then we can eat and sleep. No, I don't mind carrying the luggage. I'll carry it myself. I just don't want to be left alone. Please. Nora. The Berlitz people, they don't know I'm with someone. They think I'm alone, you know, single. It was simpler that way, to get the job, I mean. It'll only be an hour. You can do what you like. I don't care. Nora, it was the only way to be sure of getting the job. Oh, suit yourself.
Laura! Nora! Nora! Oh, there you are, hiding. You'll never believe what happened to me. I don't give a tinker's curse what happened to you. I got caught in a fight. Well, you weren't left like an unclaimed parcel, though, were you? Left for anyone to poke it and jeer it. No, I'm sorry, but honestly, Do I... you know something? I sat here today and I realised that I need you for everything. I need you for everything, too. No. Every single thing that goes into my mouth comes from you or I don't eat. Everything I want to say goes through you or I don't speak. Nora, you know I would never leave you. <sighs> Nothing but trains and parks and waiting and hiding. I thought we were going away to be clear of all that. To be free, you said. But all it is is one hole after another. And what's next, Jim? What's the next little thing you haven't told me about? Nothing. We're here. We've arrived. No, I want to go home. Nora, it's beautiful, wouldn't you see? No, I've had enough, Jim. I just want to go home. Well, which one? The one in Finn's Hotel or the one in Galway? Come on. Dalla tua nuova vita, mia bellissima amante. story is so little, and yet every moment stays. I feel I've been for a long holiday in Dublin. <laughs> no, not a holiday. A nightmare, perhaps? No, 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 no. You cannot hide your love, so you try hard. Yes. What is it? My favorite. This one. Arabic. Yes, of course. The boy is so in need. He wants to buy this girl, manga, sister. 
something exotic at the bazaar, something extraordinary. So he will deserve her. He is so hungry for her, beautiful. But you know, Joy, sometimes you, you pose a little. Oh, I pose a lot, but never in my work. Really? So tell me, why must the boy fail? He reaches out a bit too late. It is dark and dreary. The hero weeps bitter tears and curses what he calls his vanity. Reality. Yes, but you know, in life it's not always so tragic. Sometimes love can discover a treasure as strange and beautiful as this boy wants to find in Arabi. And it's real. Nora. Wouldn't you say she's real? Sì, <laughs> verissimo. Lo stesso in Croazia, dove c'è l'impero, la creatività viene sempre calpestata. Ecco perché io penso che è importante essere qui, no? Non credete? E allora Ibsen è la Norvegia, censurato nella sua stessa patria. Nulla a che fare con l'impero. Jim, è stato Ibsen, you know. How would you like Trieste, signor Joyce? Well, I'm not mad about it, to tell you the truth. At home? At this stage, everybody be up dancing, you know? Everyone here looks like stray dogs on the run from something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean you. But it's true, you know. Alessandro and I, we are runaways. We elope together. Oh, but that's like me and Jim. But we're not married. That's fine. Everyone does things their own way. <laughs> Andiamo? Andiamo. I'm sorry, Nora. We are going. But come and see me at home. You must tell me about Ireland. Buonanotte. Buonanotte. Uh, I also must go, or the newspaper will not come out tomorrow. Another time. Signora Joyce. One would have to say, Joyce, that you should get out of this situation while you can. You'll only ruin her life by making her even more unhappy than she is now. Find her? No, oh, fuck off, Ez. This is all your fault. Feel it. No. It's nothing. It's no. only a bit wet. No. <laughs> So 
someone hurt you. And I was there. I'd hurt the back so bad, I'm telling you. This George Moore character doesn't know how to end a story. The landlady thinks you're pregnant. What? The cheek of her? Why didn't she say it to me face? She wants us out. The old bitch. What will we do? I don't know. Find somewhere else, I suppose. Are you pregnant? I don't know. I thought you had appeared last month. Maybe you should write to your mother. How far? For help. I don't need her help. Be all right, won't it? Might not be. Might just be the food. Can't keep it down. Just hide it. Come on down and give us a hand, will you? Eh, non si preoccupi, è un cimelio di famiglia, non sanno suonarlo. Non, non si preoccupi. Alessandro? I am so sorry, and I'll have to wake the baby up as well. I would go myself only for the shape of me. We'll go and find him, eh? I'll find him. This will be you soon. Sometimes men get frightened when their wives are pregnant. Wait till baby comes. You'll be happy then. How can I be happy when he's a stranger to me? When I don't understand half of what he says to me sometimes. I think you should write to your mother. For what? Tell her I crossed half the world to end up with a man no better than hers. You need to end up with me, Nora. Complete freedom to come and go as you please. Freedom? To do what? To go where? I've given way to you more than I ever have to anyone. Do you not realise that? Are you joking me? If you're not out getting drunk, you're sitting there writing, and if I was to drop dead on the floor in front of you, you wouldn't even notice. I notice everything. Every little move, every little gesture, every word. I could prove it to you if you'd bother to read it. Do you not remember what you said to me the other day? When I threw away a story and started again? You asked me, will all that paper be wasted? I'm lying near you. To tell my tale. 
of friendship and sorrow, hope and betrayal. For how can I trust what friends will do? All promises, ashes and words untrue. But there is still one who softly moves to woo and win me and softly loves. My hand is near now. I touch her breast. Farewell to my sorrow. I may rest. I've been thinking, Joyce. Would you like to write the opera review for my newspaper? Most certainly. Would I be paid? Of course, but only in tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Signor Joyce, è nato ed è maschio ed è bellissimo. Felicitazioni. Auguri, Signor Joyce. È stato così bravo, Signor Joyce. Nemmeno lamento si è lasciata scappare. Who's he like? His eyes are dark. He's like you, Signor Joyce. The eyes will change color. Poor little thing. He's only born. Hasn't had a chance to look like anyone yet. Different. I'd have passed you in the street and not recognized you. So do you, I'm. Stanley, this is Giorgio. Santa Cillo, Jim. Ma no, I un po' de giudizio. He makes strange with many doesn't know. How was the journey, Stanley? Fine, fine. Have you anything left from the money I sent you? No. Hardly any. Well, you told me to buy a suit for the Berlitz, and then things are so tight at home, I had to leave some money for the girls, and then there was a matter of some food on the journey, and two eggs, some coffee, and really over 40 crowns, Jim. Quarante corone. Mandi tutti quei soldi e quel buone a niente, de tua familiare, mentre tuo figlio no a niente de mettersi. E come sarebbe potuto venire altrimenti? Hai detto tu che lo dovevo far venire qui. Ovviamente è colpa mia. Come al solito. Pensi che sia stupida. Ogni giorno mi racconti una bugia nuova. Fine, brother, you have. Welcome to Trieste, Danny. Is she all right? Well, as you can see, I didn't leave her in the streets like they said I would. <laughs> you can stay down there with you, Stenny. I'm not having that sleeping next to me. Hello, Nora. Do you know something, Stenny? That Nora there, she can't spell or punctuate or even use a capital letter, but she can produce children. You're amazing. You're amazing, Nora. See, I notice these things. No one else would. <laughs> Ah. 
be a long time waiting for his father to feed him. Your lunch is there for you on the stove. What would you be doing now if you weren't here saving your brother from drink? Nora. Jim is a genius. But he's different to other men. So I would see it as my job to ease certain obstacles so that the work can be done. That's not much of a life. But it would be a terrible shame, Nora, if Jim were not to become everything he were meant to become. <laughs> I see. A poor Stanley. All the way to Trieste to escape, and now you're the prisoner of two families instead of one. All you need now is to get married yourself. All right, Jim. All right, let's go home. Drink? For Christ's sake, Jim, you are half blind from that shite already. Would you not think of the work? Oh, God forbid I should go blind before I pay you back. I just heard today the doublers will not come out unless I pay for it. Why? They say that Dubliners is a book about Ireland, and books about Ireland do not sell. There's only one way out of this mess. You'll have to go to Ireland and, and see the publisher. What? You take Giorgio to see his grandfather. I can't go back. I can't go back. I won't get back here. Anyway, there's my classes to consider, Jim. We need that money. So let's go home. Let's go home now. Let's go home. Do you mind if I sit with you? Of course not. Should we eat? There's nothing at home. I've already eaten, but you go ahead. I'm not hungry. Cinema was good today. It was a sad story. They're all sad stories. I don't know why you bother going. It fills in the time. I cannot always be sitting in that room. 
film reminded me of someone I knew. Who? Young fella in Galway. Someone you were in love with? Yeah, I suppose I was, yeah. We were only young, like. I used to sneak out at night to meet him. We had to hide from my uncle, you see. And the time they were sending me to the convent, he stood outside, begging for me to come down, but I couldn't. And then he died, and no one told me until after the funeral, because it was that night he took bed. So he died for love of you? Yeah, he did. Why did you not tell me? All those stories of Galway, you never said a word. No, oh, don't seem so far away. But seeing that film, it reminded me, as well, as well, I should go. See if Giorgio is all right. I'll come with you. No, please don't. See you later. See you later. Why are you going, funny little lad? Fall off the bed. You fall off the bed. Where are you going? Hmm? Jim. Nora. I'm going to move out, um, so you can have this place to yourselves again. Don't be silly, Stanley. No, I have the mind made up, and. It's not working out with all of us on top of each other like this, so let's talk about it later. I just wanted to inform you of my decision. Georgia, where'd you get those papers? Oh, Georgia, what have you done? You'll go mad. Signora Joyce, devo parlarle immediatamente. Is that another new hat? I haven't paid for the last one yet. They say that living well is the best revenge. Must be half a month's salary here at least. No, oh, no, there's a lot more than that, Jim. And we're staying here tonight as well. The landlady won't let us back until we pay the rent. Ah, uh, now there's a coincidence. I just gave my notice in the school today. <laughs> Stanley will advance us some cash. It'll be all right. Is it my turn again for bad news? You mean there's more? Well, I think so. Jesus. George, you get hold of those today. Are they all here? What did he do? We'll kill him. They're torn, that's all. Read it, Jim. What? That new story. You call it the dead. I read it. Did you think it was good? Well, stranger. Hello, Nora. Is this Lucia? Come up. Come up and say hello to your uncle, Stanley. Well, now. She's a brave one, isn't she? Oh, stop. She would mind mice at the crossroads for you, so she would. <laughs> Stanley, come on up and see your latest palace, will no, you? No, Nora, I can't. Um... I do. It's been so long since I've seen you. I've missed you, Stanley. Lucia. How's Jim? He's in Dublin with George. Yes, Eva wrote to me. Jim is a bit of a nerve, really, going to Dublin to open a cinema. 
Yes, um... <laughs> I was always the one for going to the films. Do you think it'll take off in Dublin? I doubt it. So... Lucia! Isn't it great to see your Uncle Stanny? Space. <laughs> but that's because the landlord at our last place handled all the furniture. <laughs> the usual story. Have a look around. Oh, no, no, it's great, yeah. Is something wrong, Lauren? Laura, I am staying in Dublin, and so is Georgie. Everyone here is laughing. Read it out. Read out the part where he asks, is George really his son? Read out where he asks who else fucked me before he did. Did you slide your hand inside his trousers as you did with me? Did you walk along the river or go down the alley to kiss? No, he said he heard it from his own mouth. People in Dublin are laughing at him for taking on a girl that many men have enjoyed. Nice, isn't it? It's your brother, the great writer. I don't know, I don't know. He's, he's gone mad. Mad. That's Cosgrave. <gasps> and that shower of poisonous bastards. Well, he's back where he belongs. In the land of the betrayers. Now you're just going to have to write to him and tell him it's not, it's not true, right? Hmm? Jesus and Lenora, listen to me here. You know, Jim. You know that he finds rejection everywhere he goes. And where he cannot find it, he invents it. So I know that this anger is and hurts you. But Jesus, Nora, if you don't respond, if you don't deny it, Nora. You believed Cosgrave. You didn't believe me. What are you doing? I'm cleaning the room, mate. You're not well. No! I want it to stay exactly as it is. I'll go away, Stanny. You're just going to have to write to him now. 
Go away! Do you remember years ago, I asked you, did you love her? And you said, yours was the mind through which she must think. <laughs> and yours was the body through which she must feel. She was so easy that first time, I should have known. Jim, Nora gave up everything she knew and went halfway across Europe to be with you. It was the best thing you ever did. How do you mean? You got away from Dublin. You found love without asking their permission. Well, Jesus, don't you remember how Cosgrave and Gogarty tried to undermine you? How they lied about Nora just to keep you exactly where they wanted you? Excuse me. Yes, sir. Do you live in the attic room? I beg your pardon, sir? My wife used to be a maid here. I wondered if I could have a look at where she slept. Wife dead, sir. What? What did you say? I'll have to go down now, sir. You just let yourself out when they'll be ready. That's another letter from Jim. I don't want to read any more of his shite. You open it. I don't want to read it, Nora. It can't be worse than what you've seen already. Now, where's he to go away? now. <laughs> Stanny, I'll write to him now and I'll tell him how kind you've been to me this past few weeks. <laughs> Come and stand, Lucia. You haven't written for days, Jim. Is it because I was silent before to punish me? God knows who you'll go with in Dublin, the state you're in. You send me Coco and ask me, have you been cruel to me? You know you have, Jim. So cruel that I have wept and wept and lay in our bed not knowing what I will do. All I think of is you, my darling. I want to come to you now, to find you asleep, to breathe in your smell, to say all those words we say when we're alone. Write those words to me, Nora, dearest. Be shameless, disgusting. I long to see you, your eyes blazing at me when we're alone again. <laughs> Mr. Joyce.
the writing so big, there's hardly room for the stamp. <laughs> Jim's coming home. How come? Well, I sent him this wedding invitation, but it didn't work. And then I threatened to have Lucia baptised, so I did. He'll be home inside a week. Oh, I always knew I'd best him at this writing game. I wake and remember an exile am I And I pray though between us The white seas are rolling To come home to thee If tis only to die Oh green I love that way it's for me on the fate may decree. It is forever we part. Still exiled and lonely, wherever I may wander. The green I love ever remains in my heart. The Stay. Have you heard anything from home? Oh, begging letters. They're all mad jealous that I'm here instead of them. They won't be so mad jealous when they find out what you've let yourself in for. I don't know why you're so miserable, Stanny. I think Nora and Jim are really happy. Mm. Eva, I thought you'd never get here. Stanny. Nora. <laughs> Great to see you. Could you send Jim out to me, please, Nora? Oh, will you come in, Stanny? No, I, I'd just like a word with Jim. Would you give it a rest for today, at least? Will you send him out to me, please, Eva? Uh, no. She's going to help me serve the food. So either come in and join us, or I'll stand there with one arm as long as the other. Honest to God, it never stops. There's no wonder that fellow doesn't get the bite of anymore. Jim. Stanley! Happy St. Patrick's Day. Who's here so far? Tullio Silvestri. Your man who wants to paint you? Mm -hmm. And Roberto Preziozzo. Excuse me. Without his wife, as usual. She allows him to call, as long as he doesn't invite us to their house. Afraid she might have to shake hands with me, the bitch. Nora! I got mouths to feed. Sure, I don't even care. You could swing gates of her legs. It's not as if I don't know what he's spending the money on. Stanley, Stanley, if you feel that way about Pappy, then stop sending him money. But I have to. Well, then don't be coming around here complaining about it. It's your problem too, Jim. What problem? I love our father. There's a cake, Senor Precioso. Thank you very much. No, I don't mind them. They're a pair of spoiled children. Senor Joyce, the sun shines for you today. told each other so much, Nora, haven't we? Things we couldn't have told another living soul. And now we're bound together tighter than any marriage vows. But I think you owe me 
any compensation for all the things you made me feel, all that pain, all that jealousy. It was you who used the first words. It was you who touched me first in the dark. Everything we did, you began. I think it's only fair. Something in return so or equal. What? Tell me how they touched you. Who? All of them. Did he put his hands inside you? Did he make you come? No. No secrets, body or soul. I've been open with you, Nora. You know the worst about me. I want to know your every thought. Did he put his hands inside? Mm. How did he touch you? Like this? Why should I? When I have any amount of lovers queuing up for me. I want you to choose me. What are you doing here? I brought an admirer to see you. Signora Joyce. <laughs> Signor Prezioso. Well, isn't it well for some? If you nothing better to do with your time than stand round here looking at me? Thought you'd be delighted. You'll distract, Signor Silvestri. Oh, please, I I'm so sorry. Are we upsetting your concentration, Tulio? Kissing you. Who? Prezioso. Do you imagine it? It's all right, you can tell me. No. Never. Do you think you would enjoy it? Jim. Here again, Prezioso. You can't seem to stay away. Such a privilege for me. Oh, and for me, Roberto. You see, I know so little about painting, coming as I do from an oral tradition. And it suits him, Signor Prezioso. It's so much easier to lie with words rather than pictures. I think you might be right, Signor Joyce. I think you two should meet and talk more often. You should call next week, Prezioso. I'm sending Eva and the children on a little holiday in the country. My wife will have plenty of free time then. Well, uh, I would like to, of course, yes. I knew nothing about a holiday in the country. It's a treat for the children and a break for you. No, I don't want them to go. It's just a holiday, Nora. A chance for Giorgio to see a cow. Don't think I don't know what you're up to. What do you mean? I want them back. I want Giorgio here with me. Ah, stop it. Please, Nora. What is the matter with you, Eva? 
You know, you haven't stopped snivelling since the day you arrived in the place. That's not fair. You and Jim haven't stopped picking on each other. Well, go on home then, so. Do you think I want you here mooning round the place, spying on me? I do not spy on you. Well, you write enough fucking letters that can't all be about the weather. Jim? I'm doing this for you, remember? I think it's serious. What? Preciosa's infatuation with you. Did anything happen? No. But he said things. He said the sun shines for you today. And what else did he say? But Jim doesn't talk like this. Upset you. No, why should it? Because of before. Because of the way you were before. Are you trying to make me go with him so you can sit up all night writing about it? Read out bits to him the next day? Preciosa's is my friend. He's interested in my writing. Well, you tell me. Are there things about you and me in those bits you read out? Would you care? You hold yourself completely aloof from my work. I need someone to talk to. I need some encouragement. And why do you think I don't read those things? I don't know. I just know you don't. Maybe you can't be bothered. Oh, doesn't it occur to you that I couldn't bear to see my life twisted and made strange to me that's living it? Nora, please. It's, it's, it's exactly the other way around. Do you take me for a fool? I write to, to, to celebrate my life, to celebrate my life with you. No, then why do you steal my life and you make it something else? Don't you see? I can't stand these rows! You don't know you make me feel like nothing the way you talk! written again. Nora. You're my only love. 
I want you to be happy. Jim, tell me what it is you want. I'll do anything you want. You're free to do as you like. I don't care what you do, so long as you're honest and tell me. Did you fuck him? No. Jim. Did you fuck my wife? Did you fuck my wife? Did you? Did you? Did you fuck her? 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 Nothing happened. That's the truth. It doesn't matter what you say. I'll never know. Will you call into the publisher on your way through Dublin? Just to keep things moving. Very well. If you think it'll do any good. This is over now. Mr. Roberts, my husband wants to know why you still haven't published his book. It's very complicated, madam. I will write again to your husband in due course. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, you can tell me now. 
Well, they are not things one would wish to discuss with a lady. Oh, you don't have to be afraid. Myself and my husband have no secrets. Really? Well, are you aware that one of the stories concerns a... a pervert? Yes. Yes, of course. There are also hidden meanings in these stories that you, madam, may not be aware of. For example, the most recent one, The Dead. Well, frankly, there's something dirty going on in that story, if you ask me. Hello, Nora. George, you'll find your shoes. It's time to go home. Mother told me where I'd find you. They're looking very well. Yes, they really love it here. Are you keeping well? Well enough. Papi gave me a blow-by-blow -blow account of your meeting with the publisher. Bigger bollocks never put an arm through a coat. Now I hear the printer smashed the type. No. No, it's true, Nora. Dubliners never be published here. When I leave Ireland this time, it's forever. I'm never coming back. Everyone keeps asking when you're coming home. Everyone? I keep seeing him standing there with tears in his face. He thought I was lonely and that you didn't care. How was he to know Nora, that you... Nora, I promise nothing will ever come between us again. Jim, I'm never going back. You can forget it. Ah, sure isn't it great to have a bit of life around the place again. Go on, Nora, and bring Jim for a walk. Go 
I'm sure. You haven't had a real chance to have a talk together. You know, despite all our rows, Nora and me always understood each other. We knew how to have a good laugh. <laughs> what do you say, Nora? Will you give us a song? Hmm? Ah, go on, Nora. One of the old ones. Nah, I don't sing anymore. <clears throat> What are you going to do, Nora? Do you really think you can live here? All I wanted to do was to give you back your power over me. To let you choose. You did it for yourself, Jim. The way you do everything. That's not true. A day goes by when I don't ask myself what happened to us. Goodbye, Annie. Come back soon. Uh. God bless. I don't actually know how we're going to get back to Trieste. Annie was supposed to send us some money. Well, if you'll be 
Yes, mine was of the 